Hi, my name is Clara Collins and I'm going to be talking about flower language and how it can be used as a new lens for expression and a reintroduction to nature. If I were to guess, I would say that most people have given or received some sort of flowers to or from another person as a token of love or congratulatory gift or something along those lines. Usually, especially when we give flowers as a romantic gesture, we use specific types of flowers. For example, on Valentine's Day, my high school student government would fundraise by selling carnations for students to have delivered to their friends or significant others. In romantic movies, it's not uncommon to see a romantic mo moment that involves red roses. Carnations and roses are among the flowers with meanings that are more widely recognized. They represent love and admiration. The use of flowers in contemporary American society is common on the grounds of romance but most people don't know the details behind why we use certain flowers to express certain sentiments. This is where flower language comes in. Flower language is a form of expression through the use of flowers that you probably don't know that much about beyond what I've already mentioned, but I think that you should. For a little bit of background, I'll give a brief overview of some of the forms of flower language that we see reflected in our use of flowers today. Most of the flower language that we see and use in America and that people might vaguely know about when they hear the term comes from Victorian era Europe. There, flower language was never used very practically and it more represented an ideal and a romanticism of life in nature. In Japan, there's another form of flower language, which is an ancient practice that's root rooted in the Buddhist ideals of paying attention to and appreciating the small details in life, stopping to smell the roses, if you will. This form of flower language involves around 58 different flowers, and each is assigned a specific meaning. Combining different flowers and arrangements can convey more complex messages. In the past, it was used more commonly than European flower language to send messages that may not have been socially acceptable to say outright. Sometimes specific flowers would even be embroidered onto women's clothing, to show the wearer's social class. For example, on this kimono, there are peonies, which represent prosperity and good fortune, and would likely indicate that the wearer was of a higher social class. Today, this form of flower language is no longer used very practically, but it does make an appearance in some popular Japanese media. So what's the point? Why is this something that you should know about in today's world? Well, there are a few reasons. Um, for one thing, in a world where the environment is facing a lot of degradation and damage, flower language is yet another way to foster more of an appreciation for nature. An appreciation for flowers through flower language could inspire more people to try and cultivate gardens, or at least flower boxes, on top of a deeper interest in plants and nature in general. This, which could increase the biodiversity of our yards, would encourage the reintroduction of native plants species to areas that have been cleared for suburban aesthetic purposes. This is something that would benefit our much needed but also at risk populations of pollinators and could also decrease the spread of invasive ornamental plants and help to recreate environments that are more accessible and beneficial to local wildlife. It would also contribute at least a little bit to the reduction of carbon in the atmosphere. As we move away from the need for the classic post-war cookie-cutter suburban neighborhoods, why not cultivate a yard with beautiful and beneficial plants that also mean happy and healthy things? Why not add some bee balm, for example, which is also known as bergamot, to invite in native pollinators, add some color to the yard, and surround your property with something that symbolizes good health, prosperity, and protection. Similarly to other plants that have health and well-being related meanings, bee balm can actually be used as an antiseptic and, as its name suggests, can be used to treat bee stings. Throw in some cone flowers as well, which would surround yourself with more health and with strength. Flower language allows you to cultivate a native and biodiverse garden that doesn't just attract pollinators and other uh, local wildlife, but can have a more personal meaning as well. If you live in a city or somewhere where you don't have access to much outdoor space, flower language can still be a useful tool to help brighten up your home. You could add a centerpiece or decorative arrangement with some rudbeckia for encouragement and motivation, or some calendula, which is a genus that includes a handful of bright 
orangey yellow flowers like marigolds for happiness and joy. By using flower language to help decorate your living space, not only are you adding a pop of color, you're also posting a message to yourself that will remind you to think or feel a certain way whenever you notice it. On a more personal note, flower language can also be a very useful way to express yourself without having to work up the courage to say things out loud. Though America has come a long way since our puritanical roots, a lot of people still have a hard time openly expressing how they feel. To be quite blunt, a lot of people are at least a little bit emotionally constipated. I know that I, for one, don't always love telling people exactly how I feel regardless of the situation, and that doesn't just have to relate to expression, er, expressing feelings of love or admiration for someone. There's a big taboo around the idea of death in America, and it can be really difficult to express your grief when you might feel like talking about it isn't something that other people would appreciate. Feeling like you're unable to express your grief can hinder the process of understanding and healing from a loss, and though it isn't the same as being able to confide in someone, there are plenty of plants that can help you express these feelings. For example, butterfly weed, which is a type of milkweed that's native to the United States and also very beneficial to local wildlife, represents the passing of a loved one onto whatever comes next. It symbolizes remembrance, but also moving on. This is the type of flower that could provide a way to channel some of your grief. Planting and caring for a butterfly weed or similar plant can be a way to have something living to care for that helps you remember who you lost and also invites in a swarm of new life in the form of pollinators, which can include beautiful butterflies like monarchs, um, which may lay their eggs on the leaves, which would in a way be the beginning of new life from death. It can also be a way to help remind you of a lost one in a positive way by adding some beauty to your garden and also turning your negative emotions into something positive and full of life. In the form of gifts, uh, giving flowers that hold specific meanings can turn the gesture into something more meaningful. Once again, in the most well-known gesture, there are plenty of flowers that represent love and affection. Gifting roses and carnations, of course, is a great way to express your feelings directly to the object of your affections. On a larger scale, gifting whole plants like peonies, for example, as something like a wedding gift can be a great and really thoughtful gesture as well. Peonies have multiple meanings, which include but are not limited to love, prosperity, good fortune, and a happy marriage, making it the perfect wedding gift. If someone is sick or injured, flowers are a common gift to brighten up a hospital room. But gifting flowers with meanings that relate to health and well-being, or something along those lines, can be an even more thoughtful gesture. For example, snapdragons can represent strength and protection, and cornflowers can represent hope, prosperity, and future. Overall, flower language is a very unfairly overlooked concept. Not only does it encourage people to pay attention to the little details in life, which can be especially important in today's world when everyone's rushing around all the time, it can also be beneficial to the environment, to our living spaces, and to our relationships both with each other and with our own emotions. This spring, as most of us still aren't able to see many of our loved ones in person, crafting a meaningful bouquet for them and having it delivered is a lovely way of helping to keep in touch. It's also the perfect time of year in many parts of the U.S. to start gardening, so I hope that this may have inspired you to put some more thought into the flowers that you decide to add to your garden for the season, and that it inspired you to start a flower garden in general, if you don't already have one. Since so many people are doing school and work from home this year, having a garden to take care of is a great motivator to get outdoors. On that note, I would, if I physically could, uh, leave you with some peonies, achillea, and dahlias for prosperity and good fortune, um, healing and confidence and health as some wishes for the rest of the year. And I encourage you to take a moment to appreciate the little things and to look into flower language and diversifying your yard or brightening up your home. Thank you.